Alright, so in this section we're going to look at simplifying complex rational expressions. And so the first thing I want to do is to talk about, well, what is a complex rational expression? What do a few of them look like? And I also want to simplify a few uh, with just numerical fractions in them um, before we introduce some variables. So um, a complex rational expression is a rational expression that has a rational expression in the numerator or denom and or denominator, right? So um, here are a few examples, 2x plus 1 over x all divided by 3x minus 2. You see that we have the 1 over x in the numerator there um, as well, so that's what makes it complex, right? So in this second example, x plus 1 over x minus 2 divided by 2 over x plus 3 over x squared. Okay, um, so we've got fractions both in the numerator and denominator, <laughs> as well as in this last example, y over 2 divided by x minus 2 over 3x, right? Okay, so those are some examples. So I want to just um, talk about how, general strategy for how we might simplify something that looks like that. So um, one of the things um, that we're going to do is to find the LCD of all the rational expressions within the complex rational expression. So all the little denominators, right, in the little rational expressions in the, in the big numerator and the big denominator. So find the LCD of all those little denominators and then multiply both the nu big numerator and the big denominator by that LCD. And when you distribute it through you can simplify it so that the numerator and denominator of the complex rational expression are just polynomials. That's the goal, to make the numerator and denominator a polynomial. Um, and then simplify the resulting expression if it can be simplified any further. Okay, so that is the, the, the goal, and um, that's usually the simplest way to do it, but it depends on what you have. If you have just a single fraction over a single fraction, you can multiply by the reciprocal. Sometimes that's just as fast, um, but if you're adding or subtracting um, in the numerator or denominator, um, adding or subtracting two fractions, you can't do that, right? So this um, a concept of multiplying the numerator and denominator by the LCD, essentially multiplying it by one, that's a better uh, way to go about it. Okay, so I want to talk about both of those ways. Let's simplify the following complex numerical fractions. Okay, so in this first example we have 4 divided by 11 thirds. Okay, so if we were to just think about this, I want to think about it two different ways. So you would be tempted to say, okay, well, 4 divided by 11 thirds, if we think about that as like 4 over 1 divided by 11 thirds, then that's really 4 times 3 over 11, right? Or 4 over 1 times 3 over 11, which is 12 over 11. Um, uh, by the way, if you get an improper fraction like that, just leave it as an improper fraction. Don't change anything to mixed numbers in algebra unless we're working with an application problem or something. Um, okay, so let's, let's now go about that with this other method um, that I was just describing. So if we think about the little denominators um, in, the, in the rational expression, um, the numerator is already a polynomial, right? It's a, well, it's actually just an integer there. Um, and the denominator um, has a denominator itself of 3, right? So if we multiply the denominator by 3, and we also multiply the numerator by 3, we end up with 12 in the numerator, and these 3's cancel out, right? And we end up with 11. Okay, so um, we get the same result either way, right? So I'm going to do the same thing over here with 3 fifths divided by 12, right? Remember this is 12 over 1, right? So this is really 3 over 5 times 1 over 12, right? And of course 3 over 12 is 1 fourth, so we end up with 1 over 5 times 4 is 20, right? If multiplying by the reciprocal is uh, something that um, it can be easily done. Um, sometimes that is faster to see and to do, um, but I want to get you used to the, thinking about this method because when, when we throw the variables in, it really is faster. So the, the denominator itself doesn't have a denominator in this case, but the numerator does, right? The numerator has a denominator of 5. So if we multiply numerator and denominator by 5, um, the 5's cancel up top and we end up with 3 over um, 12 times 5 is 60, 3 over 6 is 1 half, right? So we end up with one, 1 over 20 when we reduce that. 
Okay, same thing, right? So in some cases, like in this case, uh, you know, I had to think about reducing that fraction a little bit more than I otherwise um, would have in, in um, just by multiplying it by the reciprocal. So anyway, um, just some food for thought, some things to think about with this. Okay, so same thing down here. It's very tempting. You've got 4 thirds divided by 2 sevenths. Multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the divisor, right? So that gives us 4 thirds times 7 halves. We could multiply that out, but I know that um, 4 over 2 is 2, right? So that gives us uh, 14 over 3, right? Okay, so again, I want to look at this through that lens of multiplying by the little denominators. So we've got a little denominator of 3 in the numerator and a little denominator of 7 in the denominator, right? So the um, uh, least common multiple there of 3 and 7 is 21, right? So if we multiply top and bottom there by 21, 21 over 3 is 7, and 7 over 21 is 3. So 4 times 7 is 28, um, 2 times 3 is 6, okay? Divide both of those by 2 and we get 14 over 3, okay? So we still get there. Um, now, um, in this last example of 1 over 10 divided by 1 half minus 2 fifths, um, you, in order to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, that denominator has to be a single fraction. So you have to find a common denominator and subtract those before you can multiply by the reciprocal. You can do that, it's just a little bit more work. This is in the realm, this kind of complex fraction, that's when finding the least common multiple of all the denominators and multiplying the big numerator and big denominator by that, it's easier. So I'm looking at all these little denominators, right? I've got 10, I've got 2, and I've got 5. What is the least common multiple amongst all of those? Well, it's 10, right? That's the lowest number that all of those will divide. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the big numerator here by 10 and the big denominator here by 10. Okay, so 1 tenth times 10 is just 1, right? And if I distribute the 10 through here, I'm going to get uh, 10 over 2, right? Minus 20 over 5. Okay, so let me clean that up a little bit. I'm going to have 1 over 5 minus 4. 5 minus 4 is 1, and 1 over 1 is just 1, right? Okay, so pretty slick, right? Um, and this step up that I, I did with distributing the 10 through to get 10 over 2 minus 20 over 5, some of you can do that in your head, right? You can say, well, 10 over 2 is going to be 5. Um, and 10 over 5 is going to be 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So <laughs> um, it, however you see to do that is, is fine. But um, when you have more simplification to do, multiplying the numerator and denominator by the LCD is usually always faster.